I'm here with Michael Salacci, uh, winemaker at Opus One. Um, we've tasted our way through uh, eight vintages, but tonight we're going to look at three vintages, um, which I have here, the 2001, the 06, and the 2007. So, Michael, um, tell me first of all um, what, what special qualities you, you brought to the 2001, because that was your first vintage at Opus, I think. Yes, um, 2001 was a rather warm vintage, and so to the sugar and the sugar accumulation or concentration um, was moving at a faster pace than aroma and flavor development. So we decided to um, harvest at night because at night the vines rehydrate, the berries rehydrate. So we um, minimized, uh, well, we, we to a nuanced level we reduced the sugar concentration. And um, I found that bringing the fruit in cool uh, allowed us to not have to chill it down so there was not a shock. To the to the to the fruit once it got into the tank, and um, fermentation temperatures we went up a little warmer than we normally do, and uh, all of this and the 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 extent the um, um, skin contact total skin con contact time we started to reduce in 2001 uh, vis-a-vis the year before the years before, and we found that we got uh, a peak or a uh, point of equilibrium where the tannins and the uh, richness and the acidity and the alcohol were in good balance at about 32 days average. And this, um, this, this reduced skin time is, is what gives the tannins their finer texture in the 2001. Mm -hmm. then th th that's the difference that I noticed between, between the 01 and the, and the 97. Okay. And um, also we're tasting the wines every day and we start to single out those that seem like they're approaching um, the time that they should be drained and pressed, and then we focus on those and taste those first in the morning um, so that we're fresh, our palates are fresh when we're making the decision, and then we drain and press it, it, uh, pretty much exactly when we want to. We don't have to wait a couple of days if we decide that a lot needs to be drained and pressed, or we'd like it to, we can have it done immediately. And uh, on to the 2006, what's, what, what's, uh, I mean, we, we thought there was a step change between the 06 and the 05 when we tasted it at the, at the decanter fine wine encounter. Um, what qualifies that step change, well, would you say? 2006 was a vintage uh, during which the Merlot really performed well. And as a matter of fact, the uh, blend composition of the 2006 has 12% Merlot, which is the highest ever in Opus One's history. Uh, also, the Cabernet Sauvignon is only 77%. Um, I, I really thought that uh, the 2006 vintage was exceptional because uh, we had a um, record, or not record, but we had very heavy winter rains, so the soils were saturated, the vines had um, a, a good start in the springtime, moderate growing season, and everything really just seemed to come together in that vintage. And on the, um, the, the quantity of Cabernet Sauvignon, we had 77%, um, I think yes. you said, yes. um, which is at least 10% down on, on the, 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 the previous vintages of Opus. Yes. And moving on to the 2007, have you got the same, have, have, we, have we still got that reduced amount of Cabernet? Uh, no, this Cabernet goes up a little bit more, uh, Merlot drops down a bit, uh, but then we have an increase in Petit Verdot. The Petit Verdot was uh, exceptional that year, but um, as in 2006, we had um, excellent lots of Petit Verdot, but they were fermented uh, on their own, as, um, uh, just as Petit Verdot. In 2007, I chose to co-ferment Petit Verdot with Cabernet Sauvignon. So our best Cabernet Sauvignon and, our, and the Petit Verdot went into the same tank, forming a little fruit cocktail. And that really tended to um, um, soften the edges of the Petit Verdot and make it less rustic, because the sooner you put Great varieties together, the sooner they're going to really come together, and um, and uh, and be a part of the blend. So that that was something that I found really allowed us to incorporate um, more Petit Verdot into the blend, and it brings a lot of um, interesting aromas: uh, dried violets, pencil lead, uh, lots of beautiful color, deep color, and uh, nice structure. And so we were able to soften the edge by by doing that. One other thing about 2007, sorry Adam, is that it was a picture perfect season until September. And then we had a heat spell and then some cool weather and then rain. So it was really um, uh, a great vintage in the sense that we had to really be on our toes. It was like dancing with Mother Nature to extract the best out of the fruit. 
Do you think um, now, uh, for the last few vintages, you've had the f- almost the full complement of grapes? You've got the Cabernet, you've got the yes. Merlot, the Malbec, the Petit Verdot. Um, that's all, I think. Cabernet Franc. And the, and the Cabernet Franc. Have you got the Cabernet Franc in there? We've got the Cabernet Franc. In one percent, I think, at the moment. Uh, it's a it? lower level, yes. Yes. That, it, that is 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 this the, is this the the final blend? Is this the blend that we're going to see from now on? I mean, it'll change obviously in terms of percentages, but are you always going to have these grapes in the in the wine? Yes, um, those are the uh, five Bordeaux varieties. Um, the wild card would be Malbec, I think, uh, because uh, Malbec uh, also has to be co-fermented with either Merlot or with Cabernet Sauvignon um, to, to bring it into the blend. And uh, on its own, it's not um, uh, a real impressive variety in Napa, um, but as a component, uh, when you co-ferment it, it really, uh, you can draw out this the, the, the little hint of spice and, and again, color and structure and a juiciness that comes from that variety that really adds to the blend. So I'm personally, I really appreciate it and I think that it's probably got a place in, in the blend as long as it wants to be there. And last question, um, some California winemakers um, react with pride when, when you say to them that their wine could be uh, mistaken for a, for a French wine or their wine doesn't seem very Californian. Um, do you regard that as a, as a compliment or an insult when somebody says that about your wine? Um, the greatest or neither, com- indeed. The greatest compliment someone could pay me is, they, is when they've said that. They sat down at, uh, at a meal with their friends or their family and they said, We've had the, we enjoyed this bottle of wine uh, of Opus One from the beginning to the end of the meal. And um, we didn't want it to end. So that's the greatest compliment to me, not whether we're like someone else. Um, we're not, you know, we're growing up, we don't need to want to be something else when we grow up. Michael Salacci. Very comfortable in our skin. Michael Salacci, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Adam.